on temptation in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Temptation is not in itself sinful. Only agreeing and accepting the suggestion of the tempter is sin. God does not tempt us to sin. James 1.13-14 says, If a person is tempted by such trials, he must not say, This temptation comes from God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and He Himself tempts no one. But a person is tempted when he is drawn away and trapped by his own evil desire. Eternal life is a pure gift of God. But God in His wisdom has willed that we merit it too as a reward for our cooperation with His grace. Thus, to struggle courageously against temptation is one of the meritorious acts we can perform with God's grace. 2 Timothy 4, 7-8 says, I have done my best in the race, I have run the full distance, and I have kept the faith. And now there is waiting for me the victory prize of being put right with God, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but to all those who wait with love for Him to appear. God allows us to be tempted for the good of our souls. Temptation is like an examination at a school. It is an opportunity for the pupil to demonstrate his knowledge for a reward. So God deals with our souls to give us the opportunity of showing our loyalty to Him and obtaining the reward He promises. 1 Peter 1, 6-7 says, Be glad about this, even though it may now be necessary for you to be sad for a while because of the many trials you suffer. Their purpose is to prove that your faith is genuine. Even gold, which can be destroyed, is tested by fire. And so your faith, which is much more precious than gold, must also be tested so that it may endure. Then you will receive praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though the tempter aims at our ruin, at our destruction, God has only our welfare in view in allowing temptation. Those who love God are more tempted than other men. The devil does not tempt those who are already in his power. But those whom he knows are not in his grasp or control and those who oppose him. A king does not attack his loyal subjects but against those who resist his authority. Colossians 1.13 says, He rescued us from the power of darkness and brought us safe into the kingdom of His dear Son, by whom we are set free, that is, our sins are forgiven. We should pray for strength to resist temptation rather than for its entire removal. When God permits temptations to attack us, He gives us sufficient grace to withstand them. 2 Corinthians 12, 8-10 says, Three times I prayed to the Lord about this and asked Him to take it away. But His answer was, My grace is all you need, for my power is greatest when you are weak. I am most happy then to be proud of my weaknesses in order to feel the protection of Christ's power over me. I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 
The devil can only tempt us within the limit God allows him. Thus, we cannot have an excuse to say that the temptation was too great for us to resist. The stronger the temptation, the more abundant is the grace. St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10.13 Every test that you have experienced is the kind that normally comes to people. But God keeps His promise and He will not allow you to be tested beyond your power to remain firm. At the time you are put to the test, He will give you the strength to endure it and so provide you with a way out. The tempter does us good service and his temptations are like steps in the ladder, in the ladder which lead to heaven. Temptations have the following advantages. We can cite four. First, it is a school of purification. Temptation reminds us of our past failures because of lack of efforts to resist it. Thus, it becomes now an occasion for new acts of contrition and the performance of contrary acts for the purification of the soul. Second, it is a school of spiritual progress. God strengthens us in virtue by allowing us to exercise our will to love Him every time we are tempted. It is by such exercise that we are grounded in virtue. We learn by experience that we are indeed stronger than the tempter. By struggle, we may become even stronger. Third, it is a school of humility. When tempted, we realize more fully our weakness, our powerlessness, we feel more the need of grace and we pray with greater zealousness. We realize how precious the grace we have received from God is. Fourth, it is a school of love of God. Like children, we run to our loving Father to whom we have recourse in all our trials. In Him we seek for strength and shelter. We are thankful to Him for His unfailing grace. In temptation, we are given the chance to prove that we have completely renounced the devil. If we give in to temptation, let us not lose heart. With humility, let us throw ourselves into God's arms. Like the prodigal son, we say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am not worthy to be called your son. Luke 15, 21 And God, rich in mercy, will give us the keys of peace and restore us to his friendship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.